Gentlemen, if this doesn't show you that the worse you treat today's women, the better they treat you and vice versa, nothing will. This woman had a man who was devoted to her, wanted to marry her and start a family. And what does she do to show her appreciation? She leaves him. Then she gets with a man who repeatedly cheats on her. And how does she punish him? She stays with him for three and a half years. And then in the end, he left her. Today's women are rarely subjective to the negative consequences of their bad decisions, at least not immediately. But eventually, it does catch up with them. Just like it caught up to Karen Cross, a 42-year-old woman who is single, childless, alone, and miserable more than two decades after leaving her fiancé back when she was just 19 years old. How different things would be for me now, she says, if I'd only listened to Matthew when he pleaded with me not to leave him in 1997, tears pouring down his face. I was crying too, and it tortured me to watch the heart of the man I loved breaking in front of me, but I was resolute. One day, I might look back and realize I've made the biggest mistake of my life, I told him as we clung to each other desperately. How prophetic those words have proven to be. What's up guys, it's your man Donovan Sharp, and I help men just like you become the very best versions of themselves by giving them the raw and honest truth about today's dating market. If you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. I discussed a small part of the article in a video I posted a few days back. You can check that out up above. But things got much worse for her, and regret began to crush her soul, and that is where we're going to pick it back up. So Karen tells Matthew she might look back and realize she made the biggest mistake of her life. She did not believe this at the time. She just told him this to make him feel better. And girls do this all the time. They say things like, I know I'm making a huge mistake, or I wish I knew what was wrong with me, as if to say she knows she's making the wrong decision, but something in her is pushing her to make the bad decision. They also like to say things like, I'll always love you, and they do this to keep men in their orbit until they've gotten their fill of random guys, which leads me to that profound statement she made, and I arrogantly thought that somehow I could put him on ice and return to him. Ladies, if you're watching, you need to heed this woman's warnings. The guys you think will stick around will become the men who eventually ignore you. They will completely ignore your feeler text messages or DMs on social media years later when you text him, hey stranger, long time. These guys are not going to want you 12 years, 30 pounds, 3 kids, and 2 abortions later. The men who will want you are the men you won't want, and this is the situation Karen finds herself in. You cannot put men with great potential on ice and expect them to still be there when you're ready to settle down. Now Matthew had just started Law Enforcement Academy when Karen dumped him, but he's probably now a detective, making a lot more money, and will likely have a nice pension when he retires. Matthew didn't wait for Karen, nor should he have. Fast forwarding through the part about how they met, we come to the point in her story where the housing market crashed which was the beginning of the end. Struggling should have brought us closer together, she says, and at first, it did. But as time went on, and my magazine career, and salary, advanced, I started to resent Matthew as he drifted from one dead-end job to another. I still loved him, she says, but I began to feel embarrassed by his blue-collar jobs, annoyed that despite his intelligence, he didn't have a career. Then he bought a lurid pink and blue VW Beetle. Why couldn't he drive a normal car? Things that now seem incredibly insignificant began to niggle. I began to wish he was more sophisticated and earned more. I felt envious of friends with better off partners who were able to support them as they started their families. Matthew and Karen were probably around the same age, so he hadn't quite hit his stride yet in terms of his earning potential. Typically, men don't start making real money until we hit our 30s. Matthew wasn't making any real money yet, and Karen's hypergamy started to nag at her. I stopped seeing Matthew as my equal, she says. I stopped seeing all the qualities that made me fall in love with him. His fierce intelligence, our shared sense of humor, his determination not to follow the crowd. Instead, I saw someone who was holding me back. Now, Matthew's first problem is that Karen saw him as an equal, which Karen thought was a good thing. But as we all know, it's not. No matter how many times feminism tells women that they can love a man who they see as their equal, women are simply incapable of this. A woman cannot respect, nor can she love a man she is romantically involved with whose perceived value is equal or less than hers. Can't be done. 
nor should it be. So Matthew was already behind the eight ball, which points out another immutable truth, which is that the very best relationships, the relationships where the man is superior to the woman, his value is higher than hers, are the relationships where the man is at least eight years older than a woman. Older men have themselves together. They make more. They're further along in their careers. They're wiser and just more mature. An attractive 22-year-old girl might have some fun with a 24-year-old guy, but she's not really taking him seriously as a long-term partner. Oh no, she's thinking about locking down the 36-year-old she's having fun with. You know, the guy who drives the Audi, owns a home, and has been seasoned by all the traveling he's done. The 24-year-old who drives a used Honda Accord, lives with his two roommates, and works at the mall isn't going to move the needle in terms of satisfying her hypergamy. Matthew was this guy, and unfortunately for him, he didn't realize his relationship was over before it began, and neither did Karen. The frequency of intimacy had dwindled, and nights out together were rare, she continues. I stopped appreciating the little things he did, like leaving romantic notes on the pillow, or scouring secondhand bookshops for novels he knew I'd love. He was my best friend, she says, yet I took him totally for granted. After festering for weeks about his shortcomings, I told Matthew I was leaving. We spent hours talking and crying as he tried to convince me to stay, but I was adamant. So now we come to what always happens in these situations when a woman leaves a man, and that is infidelity. Well, how do you know she cheated Donovan? Easy. Women never leave a relationship until they've started another one first. This is their standard operating procedure. And with that said, there are two ironclad immutable truths about women in 2020. Number one, a woman never, and I mean never, has the strength to leave a man if she doesn't have one waiting in the wings. This is why Karen was adamant when she broke up with Matthew. She'd already started another relationship, and that is what made her resolve to leave him unbreakable. Number two, when a woman actually tells you she's leaving you or breaking up with you, she's already been hooking up with the guy she's leaving you for. A woman will break up with you in her mind months before she actually does it. I never hear of a woman dumping a guy and not having another guy to swing to. This is how they all operate, guys, and Miss Cross here is no different. Women don't have self-resolve or self-motivation. They're incapable of doing anything without some sort of support system or safety net. This includes breaking up with their boyfriends and husbands. And what's the support system of choice for females the Western world over? That's right, gentlemen, another guy. That guy is what gives her the strength to leave, despite the fact that her man is pleading with her to stay. Matthew and I remain close, she continues, even telling each other about new relationships. But though I dumped him, I never felt the women he met were good enough. I can see now I was acting out of jealousy. I clearly wanted to keep him for myself. So Karen puts Matthew in the friend zone, but is still arrogant and selfish enough to want him back after she's got her fill of being the town bicycle. This is how selfish women are. They want to hop from guy to guy, from bed to bed, but they expect you not to. They want you to wait around for them while they get passed around. Just like the poorly behaved bachelorette, Hannah Brown. She wrapped her legs around every contestant at least a half a dozen times each, made sure she made out with every dude on every episode, and had biblical relations with at least two men during Fantasy Suite Week. But then she expected these guys to remain chaste for six months before they came to the show. If she found out a contestant was involved with another girl before they came to the show, she lost her mind and sent them home. She continues, Our closeness was, however, called to a halt in 2000 when he met his first serious girlfriend after me, Sarah. One night, she says, shortly after his 34th birthday, I phoned to ask his advice about something. Matthew was unusually abrupt and asked me not to call again. Please don't send me birthday or Christmas cards anymore either. Sarah opened your card last week and she was really upset. I have to put her feelings first. I hated the fact that Matthew was suddenly putting another woman before me. How dare she come between us? Over the next few weeks, I'm ashamed to say that I vented my spleen at both of them in a series of heated phone calls. I was completely irrational. I didn't want Matthew back, but I felt upstaged by Sarah. Unsurprisingly, after one particularly nasty argument, Matthew put the phone down and refused to take any more of my calls. I didn't realize it at the time, but I would never speak to him again. So Miss Cross goes from ex-girlfriend to stalker by calling his house to air Matthew out and his girlfriend. Then she says she didn't want Matthew back, but she felt upstaged by Sarah. Of course you were upstaged by Sarah. She's his girlfriend. And you're another loose female who thinks it's your birthright to keep the attention of a man you left to live the life of a single woman with a vengeance. And again, 
It is absolutely unbelievable that even though she didn't want him back, she did her level best to destroy his relationship with another woman. This is how grimy females are, guys. They don't want you, but they don't want anyone else to have you. Selfish to the core. Then Matthew finally realizes what's really going on and says to himself, enough of this nonsense. This woman broke my heart to hook up with anything with a smile, rub it in my face, and now she's got the gall to call me up and air me out? Get out of here with that. Hung up the phone and never spoke to her again. Shortly afterwards, she continues, I met Richard. It was a whirlwind romance, and within a year, we were engaged and buying an idyllic farmhouse in the Norfolk countryside where I continued my journalistic career commuting to London. He was a successful singer, and as we toured the country, I thought I had finally found the excitement and love that I craved. But Matthew was never far from my thoughts, and Richard complained that I often brought him into conversations even comparing them both. They were so different. Although outwardly romantic, Richard was repeatedly unfaithful, and I never felt secure enough to start a family with him. Eventually, after three and a half years together, he walked out, having admitted his latest paramour was pregnant by him. So Karen gets with Richard the bad boy, successful singer, tour in the country, excitement and adventure. And surprise, surprise, her rock star boyfriend was a cheater. And surprise, surprise, Karen stayed with him. Gentlemen, if this doesn't show you that the worse you treat today's women, the better they treat you and vice versa, nothing will. This woman had a man who was devoted to her, wanted to marry her and start a family. And what does she do to show her appreciation? She leaves him. Then she gets with a man who repeatedly cheats on her, and how does she punish him? She stays with him for three and a half years. And then in the end, he left her, not the other way around. This is how messed up today's women are, guys. It is crazy backwards, but this is what feminism has created. Multi-generations of women who punish good treatment and reward bad treatment. Now in the end, Matthew actually ended up marrying another woman and starting a family. Karen, unsurprisingly, is still single, alone, and childless and she hasn't talked to Matthew in over a decade. Guys, you'd be surprised at how many of these stories are actually on the internet. There are countless articles, blog posts, videos of women in their 40s warning these girls not to fall victim to the false promise of locking down a traditionally masculine man who has himself together after being passed around by those same men in their 20s who will reject them only a few years later. Even the creator of Sex in the City regrets not settling down and having children young. That article's definitely made its rounds. Unfortunately for women, for every article just like this one that warns about the perils of the single life for girls, there are a hundred articles and videos that glorify it. For every video of a 40-something telling girls to marry young and have families, there are 50 articles that talk about the joys of one-night stands and having a roster of seven men who will come and blow your back out in two texts or less. So guys, how many women in their late 30s, early 40s do you know regret leaving a man they shouldn't have back in their 20s? And ladies, why do you continue to ignore advice like this? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. And for less than the price of a cheap engagement ring, you can watch my daily live stream where I discuss articles just like this and break down popular dating shows like Love is Blind, The Bachelor, and 90 Day Fiancé. You can also get access to my archive and Sunday webinars by becoming a patron. The link is in the description.